Johnny Dollar. This is George. Uh, who? George, I said. George Reed, Floyd's of England? Floyd's of England, huh? What? That's the big insurance company sent you out to nail down Felix Kane. That's right, but now who are yeah, you? Yeah, that was uh, a couple of months ago. All right, what about it? Any mind telling me who you that are? That insurance company must have paid you a lot of money for that job, Dollar. Not only for clearing up the robbery, but for nailing Felix Kane. Maybe, maybe not. But you still haven't told me maybe who you are. Maybe gave you a nice big bonus, huh? Because when it was all over, Felix was dead. Who are you? George who? That's killing for money, isn't it? And remember, it was Felix's girl, that little redhead here in New York. You had somebody trick her into telling you where to find him. So now she's doing a stretch because she was in with him. So? I remember when you tagged Felix here in New York? He fell on top of his own gun, killed himself. Isn't that the way you said it happened? Now, you listen to me, mister. Yeah, that's what you said. That's what you said then. Who are you? And nobody could prove otherwise. Because nobody else was there. All right, look. Now, you listen to me. What I say now is you were pretty lucky then. You didn't know how lucky you were. That's all? Yeah. You see, the only reason you got away with that was because Felix's brother wasn't there. Because he was on the lam. He was on the West Coast when it happened. Kane's brother, huh? Yeah, they were awful close, Felix and his brother. All their life. Ever since they were kids. You didn't know that, huh? Keep talking. Somebody did something to one of them. The other one helped them out. Or got even for them. All their life, Dollar. Go on. So now that Felix is dead... You ought to know what that means. Because it means the other one is going to get even for him. That means get even with you. With you and anybody else. All right, you. Now, wait just a minute. Oh, you're wising up now. Yeah, I think I am. George, huh? Yeah, that's right, Dollar. My name is George. George Kane. Felix's brother. Huh? Huh? <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Killer Kin matter. So what if I hadn't killed Felix Kane? It didn't make any difference now. But why would his brother George call me to warn me of his intentions? Anyhow, this was a carryover from another case, so on the expense account goes a dime for a call to George Reed. Well, of course, we'll pay whatever expenses may be involved. Well, good old Floyd's of England. But, George, what I really call we'll about... We'll simply regard it as an extension of the Felix Kane matter. Well, what I call about is to find out if you know anything about this brother George, where to find him and so on. Don't you mean how to avoid him? No, no. In a case like this, it's a matter of getting to him before he can get to me. Yes, perhaps you're right. So what do you know about him? Oh, I never heard of him, Johnny. Well, then maybe I'd better go on down to New York where the trouble with his brother Felix started, where Randy Singer at the 18th Precinct helped me to... Well, sure. What? Sure, that's where George Kane is in New York. Yeah, two or three times he used the phrase here in New York. Well, now, Johnny... So, George, I'm heading on down there. Johnny, listen to me. Well? You must have some police protection. Here in Hartford? Here in New York, anywhere. Look, uh, didn't you understand me, George? I'm going down there and contact Lieutenant Singer. But if this George Kane comes here and then you come back here after not finding him down in New York... Oh, stop worrying, George. Johnny! I'll be in touch. Item 2, 690, fare and incidentals to New York. Item 3, $6 even for a cab into 18th Precinct Headquarters. Lieutenant Randy Singer apparently knew plenty about George Kane. That's right, Johnny, and we still want this George Kane on a charge of assault with intent to kill right here in the city. But he was in California, hiding out in California, when you knocked over his brother Felix. When I caught up with Felix. Huh? Oh, yeah, Yeah. you said he made a dive for you, but then tripped and fell on top of his own gun, didn't you? That's the way it happened. Is it, Johnny? Huh? I know that's the way you reported it, but, uh... Is that what really happened? Randy, are you kidding? Of course it is. Okay, I'll take your word for it. But you'll never convince George you didn't kill Felix. (sighs) No, I suppose not. And he's clever, Johnny. Tall, good-looking, and very clever. Yeah. 
Then why did he telephone me, warn me that he's out to get me? I don't know. But I know that he outsmarted us by posing as a cop a couple of times. Forged credentials and everything. And he's dangerous. Well, where do I look for him? <laughs> I wish I knew. Believe me, we'd nail him fast. Well, he's from right here in New York. And that's where he called me from, Randy. How do you know? Well, he mentioned being here a couple of times. The operator say it was a New York call? Well, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's here, maybe he isn't. With this new direct dialing system for long distance, you can't tell where a call comes from. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got a point there. Anyhow, for once in your life, you're using your head. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, you're coming here and letting us go after this guy instead of trying to take him on single-handed. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. Now, look, Randy, all I really came here for was to see if you had yes, any leads. Yes, sir, using your head. Yeah, any leads on where I might look for so this So we'll here. just keep it that way. Understand, Johnny? Understand what? We'll run down this punk for you. I'll get out an APB and look for him and pick him up right away. Look, he's here in town. No, wait, would you please, Randy? Meantime, you just go on back to Hartford, huh? And, uh... Maybe you better tell your police up there to be on their toes. Well, listen, Randy. And to what be I... sure you do go, I'll have Sergeant Conroy escort you over to Grand Central and put you on a train. Oh, Randy, for the love of Mike, will you also, listen? Also, I'll notify every precinct here in New York that if you're seen around here, you're to be picked up and turned over to me. Picked hmm? up? After all, here in the clink, you'll be perfectly safe from this man. <sighs> what a pal. Yeah, that's right. A real grateful one. Grateful, huh? Mm, you've done a lot for me over the years. For the whole department. Oh, yeah. So, to show our appreciation, we're going to give you some protection. Whether you like it or not. Now, you just listen to me, Randy. Uh, listen Conroy, to me. Conroy, I got a job for you. Randy. I want you to make sure that Johnny Dollar gets back to Hartford safe and sound. Okay, brother. We'll just see about that. Uh, hmm. No use, Johnny. All these windows have bars on them. Yeah, so I see. So you behave yourself for once, huh? Be a good little boy and let me handle this my own way. <laughs> okay, Randy, okay. Oh, uh, and listen. Yes? Uh, Sergeant Conroy is quite a fan of yours. Oh? So you can tell him all about some of your wild adventures on the way home. Thanks, pal. <laughs> And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Killer Kin Matter. Sergeant Conroy not only drove me over to Grand Central Station, but insisted on riding all the way to Hartford with me, even to my apartment, at my expense. That's item three, 12.55, train fares and taxi. And what if it is a little irregular, Mr. Dollar, me coming up here to Connecticut? Oh, will you finish up what you were telling me on the train about the deadly debt matter you worked on last week? You just got to the park. So item four is 70 cents for his phone call to Randy, telling him he delivered me safely home. And item five is about three bucks for the good scotch whiskey that he drank there at my apartment before I could send him on his merry way back to New York. Then less than five minutes after... He... Johnny Dollar. Dollar, if you think those New York cops are going to be of any help, you're wrong. George Kane. That's right. Neither those cops or anybody else is going to do you any good. You killed my brother, so I'm going to kill you. Kane. And you remember what I said about you or anybody else? Now, you listen, you're wasting your time. Well, what I meant about anybody else. <laughs> you're all scared, Stefan. All right, Georgie boy. Whether Randy Singer likes it or not, I'm heading back to New York to get your picture, your description from him. And if I have to comb that city by myself, street by street, so... Hello. Honey, huh? this is Betty. Betty Lewis, the girl you're going to marry one of these days. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. You mean you are going to marry me? I mean, I, I, I knew it was you. Spoil sport. Well, uh, hi, dear. What was that? What? Uh, just noisy line, I guess. Oh, well, listen, I've been trying to call you all afternoon. Where have you been? Oh, just out on some business, honey. I'm sorry. Well... As long as you weren't out with some other ravishing beauty, I'll <laughs> forgive you. Fat chance of that. Huh? Honest? You mean that? Ah, you know darn well I wouldn't go out with anybody but you. Or Grace, or Marianne, or Barbara. Maybe Jean. I might Will go out with her. Will you stop that, you rascal? Okay. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Lewis? 
What can you do for me? Don't tell me you've forgotten our date for tonight. Our date? Oh, darling, why don't you ever think of something besides those crazy insurance <laughs> investigations all the time? Huh? I think only of you, huh? Yes. Now, listen, about our date for tonight here in New York. In New York? Yeah, that's right, for dinner in the theater, remember? Holy. Well? Oh, well, sure, sure I do. Oh, but didn't you say you were going to be staying with some girlfriend all week and you'd let me know who and where to meet you down there? That's right. That's what I've been trying to call you for. Okay, then. I'm staying with Nancy Spaulding, remember her? Sure. And her address is 1624 McDougal Alley. 1624. It's one of those cute little apartment buildings down here in Greenwich Village. Wait a minute. You hear that again? Huh? Uh, nothing, I guess. Yeah, okay, dear. I'll put on my Sunday best, grab the first plane or train, whichever will get me there first. Good. Only, uh... Only what, Johnny? Well, uh, don't be surprised if we have ourselves a kind of police escort. Now, what kind of a gag are you cooking up? You and that Lieutenant Singer friend of yours? Uh, maybe. Well, come running, dear. I'll be waiting for you. Yeah. Bye, hon. <laughs> The plane schedule told me I barely had time to shave, shower, and get dressed. But as I finished and was about to head for the door... Yeah? Yeah, who is it? Mr. Perry, the building super. Oh. Yeah, what's up, Mr. Perry? Uh, kind of funny thing, Mr. Dollar. And I kind of thought you ought to know about it. Know about what? Uh, you mind if I close this door? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well? Well, <clears throat> you know that young man rented the little one room? next door for the week? No, no, I don't. I thought it was vacant. No, sir. I haven't heard anybody in there, so... Well, I guess he heard you all right. What? He rented the place for a week, starting last night. Yeah? So when he left in such a hurry a few minutes ago, well, I sort of come up to take a look, see what he might have thought was wrong with it. Well? Well, you see this wire I found? Yeah, it looks like the stuff the phone company used... Wait a minute. Yes, sir. It was sticking out of the wall just opposite to where your phone wires go in on this side. Sure, my line was tapped. Yeah, sure looks like it. It was some kind of device so he could ring me. And this man has left? Yes, sir. Maybe 20, 25 minutes ago. Who was he? What was his name? Well, he give his name as John Jones. Oh, sure. Like, uh, oh. like he was just sort of making it up. Oh, what did he look like? Well, I'd say about your height, Mr. Dollar, and... Uh, well, keep talking, Mr. Perry, while I make this call. Well, his hair was darker than yours. And he the call was to Randy Singer for a description of George Kane. And yes, it tallied with the one Mr. Perry gave me of the man who tapped my phone line, who just left in such a hurry. I told Randy I was heading back to New York whether he liked it or not, that I barely had time to make a plane, that I'd call him when I got to the apartment in McDougal Alley and tell him all. Maybe even break down and ask for his help. And all because Kane had said he was out to get not only me, but anybody else who'd had a hand in catching up with his brother. Well, the only anybody else was Betty, Betty Lewis, who'd helped me trick Felix Kane's girl into showing me how to reach him. George hadn't bothered her there in Hartford because he couldn't find her. She was in New York. But over the phone, while he'd listen in, she'd given the address. During a frantic ride to the airport, I hoped, I prayed, that I could somehow reach Betty before George came. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item five, twenty dollars even for a plane to New York and a cab to the little apartment of McDougal Alley. I tore on up to Nancy Spalding's apartment on the second floor. Yes, who is it? Johnny, Johnny Dollar. Oh, just a second, Johnny, while I slip on a robe or something. Is Betty there? Betty? Are you kidding? What? You and your practical joke. What do you mean, Nancy? Come on, let me in, huh? Well, just a second. Wait till I get presentable. Oh, come on. You come see, on. I got in the shower after Betty left. Betty's gone? Nancy! Well, sure, Johnny. That's why I didn't expect to see you gone, here. Gone, gone where? With whom? With that handsome detective friend of yours you sent over to get her. Oh, no. About my size, black hair, mustache. That's right. Nancy. Gee, why couldn't you have arranged a double date so I could trace Nancy, along with him? That man's a killer. He's almost as pretty as you are and almost... What? What did you say? That was no detective. That was George Kane. He's a killer. But, but Johnny, Betty thought that... Well, you told her on the phone. I know, I know. Oh, 
Okay, Nancy. Now, listen. Listen carefully. Where did he say he was going to take her? Well, to meet you, Johnny. Where? Oh, dear, I don't know. Oh. Well, they went down and took a cab. I watched them go from the front window. Well, did you... I mean... Please, think carefully, Nancy. Which way did they go? East on McDougal. Good. What kind of a cab was it? Did you... Did you by any chance get a look at the license or the driver? Yes. Yes, I did. It was Tommy. Tommy? Tommy who? You know, the cabbie who always parks in the cab stand out front this time of night. Good. Wait a minute, Johnny. Maybe... Ah, uh, what? Yes, look. He's come back to the stand again. Okay, okay, Nancy. Now, keep this door locked. Don't open it for anybody but me or the police. And I mean the real police. Johnny! Tommy. Is your name Tommy? That's right. Where's to, mister? Okay, listen. A little while ago, you picked up a man and a girl here. You mean that good-looking doll staying with Miss Nancy up on the second floor? That's right, yes. That's right, I did. Her and the good-looking guy, I think I heard him say he was a plainclothes man. Okay, okay. Do you remember where you took them? Why, sure, mister. You see, we have to keep a record of... Get going, that... Tommy. Get going. Take me to where you took them. Yes, sir. It's a kind of funny place for a couple of good-looking people get like... Get going, please, huh? Yes, sir. Come on, step on it, will you? This is a matter of life or death. You serious, mister? Look, Tommy, that was no plain clothes man with that girl. That was a killer. You serious? Step on it. Yes, sir. But if we run across any prowl cars, oh, mister... Oh, forget him. I'll give you enough to pay your fines for the next two years. Now, where did he take the girl? This section of the town we're getting into looks kind of crazy. That's what I told you. It's over near the Bowery. Some dirty dump that... Uh-oh. What are you slowing down for? I knew I shouldn't have mentioned it. I knew we'd tangle up with a prowl car. Don't you see the red light in back of us? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that's the best thing we could ask for. The best thing? Come on, pull up. Let me handle it. Somebody better, mister. All right, all right. Where the devil do you think you're going? Now, listen, officer. Sir, it was you who had this poor cabbie tearing through all them red lights, was it? O'Reilly? Tim O'Reilly. Now, listen, Tim. Listen I... to me. This is an emergency. My name oh, is... Oh, Johnny... an emergency, is it? And out you come, me boy. Wait a minute. Will you listen to me, please? I will not. Come out of there and get into me prowl car in the back seat. Listen, we're chasing a killer. You can help us. I said get into the prowl car. So get in. Oh, I have sure, to... yeah, okay, okay. Tommy, look, you lead the way. Here. Here's 20 bucks for you. Well, thanks, but Just I Just lead think... the way for this prowl car to wherever it was. He leads the way to nowhere. In you go now, into the back seat. Wait a minute, Joe. Get in, please. Just take it easy. Okay, Tommy. Huh? Get on your way. Right, all right. Oh, no. Yeah, I knew that had to be you, Johnny. Randy. I mean, charging into that cab there on McDougal Alley and heading this way. We had quite a job catching up. Okay, now, Randy, listen. Now, just calm down and take it easy, Johnny. Would you listen to me? No. Because everything is under control, thanks to you. Thanks to me? But don't you understand George Kane? I... I mean, Betty Lewis, you know her. George and Betty, George is taking her George to someplace. George isn't taking her anywhere, Johnny. Well, of course he is. I'm trying to tell you. What? And I'm sure glad you gave me that McDougal Alley address over the phone. Huh? Of course, we only went there to pick you up, but when we saw a cab taking that girl of yours and some man away... George Kane. Yeah, I kind of thought it might be him. I don't know why. And so when we trailed that cab over to some dingy rooming house over on... Well, anyway, when they got out, we got a good look at him. Get caught. That's right. By the time we get to the station house, he'll be in the clink, and the light of your gay young life will be there waiting for you. She's uh, quite a doll, Johnny. <laughs> The expense account, forget it. Forget all of it. I only hope that someday, somehow, I can repay Randy Singer over his dead body, though, because all he cared about was getting his hands on Kane. And for some silly reason, he seemed to think that I'd been helping him. <laughs> what a guy. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, James McCallion, 
G. Stanley Jones, Herb Vigran, Jack Moyles, Junius Matthews, Lillian Fayef, and Paul Duboff. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.